how does training your dog with games work? I was speaking to a friend earlier this week and she asked me the question, is it a viable option? Is it something she could do? So we sat down over a coffee. I explained everything to her. I scribbled it out on a napkin and her mind was completely blown. So I'm gonna share with you how training your dog with games can work and how it can work for you. Are you ready? Let's go. So if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss another video. When it came to training my own police dogs, I was determined to find another way to train my dogs without the need to use force, intimidation or aversive methods. And that search led me down the path to where I am today, helping amazing pet dog owners build rock solid foundations by training with games and having a ton of fun along the way. So how does training your dog with games work? So the first question is what's a game? Because if you speak to another dog trainer or if you speak to someone else, it may be completely different to what I think a game is. So when I'm talking about a game, this is what a game is to me. A game enables me to take a small, tiny element of our dog's behavior. Think of a jigsaw puzzle piece in your mind. It's a simple game. It's easy to do whether you're a professional dog trainer or a complete beginner. Now, let me share what I drew on the napkin for my friend, because this really needs to be explained in pictures. When I first became a professional dog handler, we traditionally followed a method that's very much recognized even today called back chaining, where you start with the end behavior in mind, then you train the next piece of the puzzle and you go backwards and backwards along the line. And eventually you piece those pieces together in a linear pattern. Now, the problem that I could see with this kind of 2D linear approach to piecing games together was that when you put all these pieces together, it would only work really well and really consistently if you kept every single piece of that puzzle in tip top condition and you had to train it all the time and follow a particular order. The other problem I could see was that if one of those games either didn't exist, you hadn't trained it or you hadn't included it, or it was a bit weak and shaky, then that whole chain of behavior would be broken and the good training you'd done no longer worked. So let me show you the complete alternative. This is the new way of doing things. This is the way we do things at Genius K9 to build rock solid foundations. It's what I did with my police dogs and it's what I do with my own dogs. Let's say you've got games galore and you're faced with lots of games. And you look at all these games laid out in front of you and you cannot wait to play all of them. Because at the end of the day, games are fun. Games are a ton of fun, but there's a structure and there is a formula to putting those games together so that it really works for you. So you've got games for a purpose and not just games for the sake of playing games. What you need is a structure and a clear path. And that's where building rock solid foundations really does make a difference. So let me show you how I do things in a completely new way. So let's take a look at the selection of games that you have available and you want these games to work for you, but it's difficult to organize them in a way that really makes sense. So here's what we do. Let's take pulling on lead as an example. It's a really common problem and it's a really frustrating problem, but it's not really one thing on its own in isolation. It's many things that need to work together to get success with it. So if I pick three main pieces of that puzzle. I want my dog to be comfortable being close to me. They need to be confident being close to me. And there'll be a number of games that I can play that can help me reinforce over many different games that being close to me and choosing to be close to me is something that's really reinforcing to my dog. So that's one piece of the puzzle. The next piece of the puzzle, I would call it thinking and arousal, but really think of this in terms of when life gets exciting, can my dog still listen to me? Can my dog still respond to either my movement, my words, or my actions? Something along those lines. So when life gets exciting, this is when most people struggle. Life gets exciting and there'll be a number of games that I could play to make that possible, to reinforce my dog's ability to think when life gets exciting. And the third piece of the puzzle might be self-control. When my dog sees something exciting, lunging towards it and barking is something I don't want it to do. So I'll have some games 
to teach my dog self-control. I'll categorize the games and sort them into those three pieces of the puzzle. The games that are really going to help my dog be comfortable being close to me. The games that are going to help my dog think when life gets exciting. And games that are going to help my dog with self-control. And when you see the games now organized in some sort of category, games start to make way more sense. Now, the beauty of game-based training is we do not need to play them in any particular order. I can play any of those games in any order. This is where the structure completely changes. So no longer a 2D linear look at structuring games. This is games in 3D. We've got a three-dimensional puzzle of rock solid foundation games that even if there's a few games missing, is not going to fall apart. And the fact that it's games and it's fun, it's an addictive way to learn because games are not just fun for your dog, they're fun for you as well. And that is an important piece of the puzzle. You are 50% of the dog training puzzle. It's not all about training our dogs. It's about us learning together with our dogs. But the even better way to show you is to have a look at what this really looks like in real life. So Carrie and Indy are a great example of how foundation games have worked amazingly for them. One of their biggest pain points was pulling on lead. It was making walks almost physically impossible. Indy pulled, was distracted by pretty much everything in the environment and walks were becoming a nightmare. So we used this game-based formula to make the foundations amazing. We were able to achieve a much more consistent, relaxed walk. And now Indy can control herself way better. She's got a much better connection with her amazing owner and they can enjoy walks together. It is absolutely transformed life for them. We played a series of games to build rock solid foundations. And if you're looking for a game to stop your dog pulling on lead, check out this video where I show you one simple game to help you get started. So this is how game-based training works and it can totally work for you. If you'd like to go deeper on how game-based training works, then I've got a free web class. You can register for that web class by clicking on the link in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to make sure you get notified whenever a new video is released. And I'll see you in the next video.